one, and this is Travis Corbin, in which Shaper Speaks. Shaper, where we empower and educate through music, movement, and media. You know how we do every week, another special guest. This week, I finally got him in the building. I've been bothering this man to come on the show. Mr. Dominique Santana, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Good morning. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um... I'm really excited. I got a bunch of questions. I asked, I told him I asked him probably most of the questions before we even got on air. But I mean, just because I'm so excited to have him and just so excited to hear about the journey. Excited to hear about, you know, what's next, what what you can tell me that's coming up next. You know, I know you can't tell me everything. But um, I mean, uh, you know, how you doing? Number one, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm yeah. good. Um, just getting back settled in and been somewhere everywhere and East Coast and West Coast and Crazy schedules, you know. All That's that. what happens when you when you blow up. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it. Time of time it. gets shorter, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, demands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, recently, you know, you know, one of your, you know, recently, you're an actor. Uh, you know, I could I could go on like so. Is your your main thing now is acting, right? Yeah, well, I like to tell people I'm first and foremost a businessman. You know, okay. And then I have tools that I use in the mm. arsenal, you know what I mean? Let me, let me write that down. <laughs> I own companies and, you know, I, well, of course, I've been an actor for years now. And so that's always, you know, also been my main arsenal. Right. Uh, but yeah, I'm a businessman first, and then, you know, acting is one of my biggest tools. Right, right. So, um, you know, let me start off like this, because everybody, that, anybody that listens to the show know I'm big, know, knows I'm big on, dreams and growth and work the combination right mm -hmm. so let's talk number one about when this thing started for you in terms of acting being a dream because so many people out there i mean i and i talk to them you know i what i do at, you know i work at cape Fear community college i do mentorship i do speaking so a lot of times when i hear young people which is my really my main focus a lot of them want to do or become who you are becoming um Talk about that journey a little bit. Talk about the realities of it, because a lot of people don't talk about the reality of it. They think right. it's just, it's just, you know, if I just go out there, I'm just gonna go to Atlanta. <laughs> no money, I just got the dream. You know what I mean? Good luck. <laughs> L.A. So, talk about the process and the work that you put in, and when, when you first, first of all, when you first had this dream, and, and how it kind of sprouted. Uh, it, it began as a, as a kid. You know, I know it's kind of cliche, but right. Um, it began as a kid. Of course, it wasn't super serious then, but it was something that I really kind of stuck with. Uh, let my mom know that's what I want to do. You know, and she even went as far as she took me to like this Oscar Mayer commercial. They were doing like a yeah. national call. Get out of here. You know what I mean? And the people they liked me, but they were saying I was too big. Right. Like they wanted a kid, one of those kids that even when they get thirteen, they'll still look eight. Right. Right. <laughs> All like a long term, right, like right. the Oscar Mayer kid type deal. Right. They never. Grew so that would have been big though, but. Right. But you know, they were like, he's, you know, he's too big. You know. They say, wait, 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 wait. So they told you why they said they yeah. think, are they they blatant on like rehearsal, like yeah. auditions and stuff? Yeah. Like you know, too tall. Whatnot. Right. I didn't look as young as they you know wanted. You know, they wanted like like you said, they wanted somebody a little long term. And they could tell, you know, in two years, I'd probably be a you know, grown man, foot taller. Right. You know what I mean? So they were like, you know, no. And so, <laughs> you know, from that process, I didn't really, I don't recall going on any more auditions after that or whatnot. Um, you know, life happens. Uh, but it's something I still played around with, had in the back of my mind and stuff like that. And um, I went, you know, when I got older and I went to high school, mm -hmm. I, I was blessed and fortunate enough to have a theater arts teacher because I went to a theater arts class just trying to get an easy A. Right. And but fortunately the teacher we started with, our first our teacher was there first, the main teacher, and then uh, she left like a month into, you know, the school start school year started and she had to go have a baby, right, she was right, pregnant, right. et cetera. And so we had a real nice sweet lady that came in and took over and she was there with us for about uh, three months. And um, well then eventually the main teacher came back. Right. And so everybody was mad about it. You know, because we loved the teacher that we had. She was, a, you know, she was a good lady. She was a good teacher. And we just remember, her name was Vivian Wade. We just remember her for being mean before she left, so nobody wanted to deal with her. But she came back, and then we uh, realized, you know, at that point that she was had a whole different attitude and obviously felt better. Right. And uh, But she had actually worked in the business before. Okay. You know, on Broadway yeah. and television and, you know, whatnot. And she had the bright idea. She also taught, she taught at the college level. She wanted to get actors at a younger level, you know. And mold them. 
right. kind of mold them. Right. right. But she, I, I believe, matter of fact, after we graduated, I think she gave up that idea <laughs> and went back to college. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, you know, long story short with her was, you know, she really pulled me to the side because I was just clowning around. That's what I was used to doing in that class, clowning around, have fun. We were overpacked. It's like 40 kids in this class, you know. And, um, you know, she pulled, pulled me to the side one day, and she would always give me a lot of problems, you know what I mean, as far as because I wasn't doing what she wanted Pushy. me to do. Right, so, she, you know, she, she stopped me one time in the little hallway in the back of the class and was like, look, she was like, you know, she's like, why don't you participate? Why don't you do them? Like, cause you're always on me. You know, you drive me nuts. You're always bugging me. And so she was like, look, I'll make you a deal. She was like, you have something that in the entertainment business we call it the it factor. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody can really explain it. It's just something about you that people are going to want to see you. Right. I'm 17, 16, 17 at the time. I'm, I play football. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, so she was like, so I'll make you a deal. Where's PE class? Right. <laughs> so she was like, you know, I'll make you a deal. If you just listen to me and do what I ask you to do, I'll ease up off you. So I was like, bet. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was in that time where I learned some things like improvisation, mainly, that carried me all the way up into my career, mm -hmm. you know, later on. And um, so, you know, I graduated, you know, I graduated from, me and her have had a really great relationship after that. Right. And um, I got to shine in some plays and stuff like that. And my friends would joke, but I actually loved it. I right, it. right. And so um, after that, um, I graduated and a little bit later, I went uh, to Tennessee to play ball, had an injury or whatever. Oh, you so know. you play you play ball in college in Tennessee? Yeah, well, I never really got to you know play in a regular right. season, right? You know, because I was coming off an injury that was rehabilitated. Gotcha. And then you know they were like, "We'll take care of everything." So I was like, cool. And then you know same injury happened. So again, so it was like I had a choice to make. You know, risk you know walking around on a cane if it happens again, or pursue something else. So I chose to pursue something else. And in my mind, that's I hadn't even started trying to go for film yet. But in my mind, I was like. I know at least now I can pursue acting, and I'm right. pretty sure I can get successful in that. And uh, so, so you had, but see, you at least had the 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 confidence. You had some co a level right. of confidence that you could be successful in it. Yeah, well, I, I was raised. One thing I can say about my mother is I was raised to, you know, there's nothing I couldn't do if I really wanted to do it. Right. If I was really determined that I had no limitations. Right. Right. So in my mind, you know, I became an adult that. That's how I felt. Driven, right? Yeah, there was nothing, even if it was hard or, you know, when everybody, I had this thing when everybody would say, oh, that's impossible. It made me want to do, do that it. thing. Ah, uh, yes, I know it well. I know it well. I know that well. Right. So, you know, even with uh, me and my partner's businesses that we started, mm -hmm. um, even the first business we started, you know, it basically changes the way people purchase vehicles. And of course, everybody around here, the dealerships and, you know, in the surrounding areas that we now do business with, you know, they're, everybody was stuck in their ways of how they do things, and everybody kind of laughed us off like a joke. And But we still pushed it, and then once we got a few smaller independent lots, you know, on board that just needed help, right. then, you know, we showed them we're making money. And everything changes when people see, oh, you're making people money. money right. Oh, right. now let's talk. Let's talk. Let's, let's see how yeah, I can get, how, yeah. how can I become a part of that? Right. Right. So then we were able to spread that and also spread word with the community for uh, customers and whatnot. And, um, but back to the filming, so then I come, you know, I migrate, my family migrated to Wilmington in that time. Yeah. Uh, right after I graduated. So, um, so I'm originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Okay, okay. So I, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from yeah. Fayetteville. Um, and so, I, I, I mean, I, I got to say this. I've, for years, I bumped into this guy. We didn't really, really know each other. We would speak, mm -hmm. but we really didn't really, really know each other. So you're from Fayetteville. Yeah, originally. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, definitely from Fayetteville. Um, I mean, when people ask me, I spent so much time in Wilmington that, um, you know, it's like I'm, I'm from here. It's like, you know, I got up to being a, you know, got through my, my teens up until my late teens, graduated high school. Right. Then it was time to start learning and growing to be a man, and I did that in Wilmington. You know, so Wilmington is, you know, just as big a part of me as, you know, Fayetteville is, and especially in my life. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I represent Wilmington, you know what I mean? Wilmington, when people say, where's home, I say Wilmington. Uh, originally from Fayetteville, but you know, that's what's up. home. Um, 
Cause so, you, don't, you don't want people to start saying, oh, you from the poor city, you're not from right. <laughs> you know, and people do that, though. You know, people, you know, like my boy, you know, he's doing this, this, and that, and he's from the port, or people send me messages online. Right. You know, you represent the port city, and it's, I don't ever be like, no, nah, I ain't from the port. <laughs> you know, because I, right. I got nothing but love for the port. Right. You know, I've had some really high ups here. I've had yeah. some really lows in the port. Right. You know what I mean? But all in all, the port is where, you know, I it developed started. into what I developed into. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was a fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like like anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wil- Wilmington is just, um, it's not, what's the best way to put it? Wilmington is not um, the friendliest place in all avenues, you know, as far as, you know, if you're going into business or you're trying to, trying to do something other than just go work a menial job. Right. You know, you, in Wilmington, you really got to fight, you know. To, you do. To own businesses or to become something other than, what it's already predetermined that you're more likely gonna be. Man, I could, I could. You start, a, you could start a whole nother conversation on just that piece. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, but I'm a fighter. So, you know, to me, it was a welcome challenge. You know, all the things that you know, some of the people that are from this community say, oh, well, you, you know, we don't do stuff like that, or right. you know, it's gonna be too hard. This, or that, yeah. and me, I'm like, you know, no. Right. And he, like I said, I have that man. And then I'm Aries. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so everything is, you know, I'm going head first. Right. You know, right. it's a challenge. I love it. And I, so I started learning. I started, I took a little film studio uh, tour when they were doing the tours back in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I met, yeah. met some agents there, you know, some local agents. And um, that was my first time seeing like a film set. So then I did the extra stuff. I found out yeah. you could be an extra. And I was like, I was excited. I was like, you can be on a film set? A real one? Real one? And make money? Right. Like, and so other people were there just, oh, it's a quick few, you know, a couple mm-hmm. dollars. Me, I was there like, I can see everything. I can learn it. You know, I can see how the actors operate. I can see right. how the director and producers. I'm out there taking notes. And t- and, and talk to people. That right. And networking. I'm a networking piece. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I networked with people because that's huge. Yeah, it's business. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you, if you want to be an actor or entertainer in the entertainment business, you got to know how to... Not only talk to people, but do it in a way that a professional way. Right. You know what I mean. So you're not seem you don't seem like uh, starstruck. Right. You know. Right. I'm just trying to hang on to your coattails. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And see what you do is you get cool with one of the PAs or something like that, and then you start hanging around them, mm-hmm. producers and other people. What's a PA for those that don't know? A production assistant. Okay. Uh, they're the ones that um, they're one of the crew members that get paid the least, but put up with the most crap. You know, and they usually go on to be either producers or directors. directors. Or so. Always be nice to PAs. Yeah. Because yeah. in my ten years of being in this business, I've seen people go from fetching water to, you know, deciding who's getting casted in this movie. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Nothing worse than walking in and seeing a PA you gave hell to, and now they're the ones yeah. behind the desk writing notes while you audition. <laughs> right, right, right. So you know, well, that's a nugget. No, that's a nugget of yeah. information. That's important. Yeah, always be nice to everybody because it's it's ever evolving, and everybody. The thing I love most about being on a film set, it's one of the only places I've ever been, and I've been a lot of places. I've done a lot of different jobs, I've done a lot of films and television, and still, I've never seen another place like it where you're actually somewhere where every single person around you is loving what they do they're living their dream yeah so you can imagine the positivity and the yeah. energy from all of that you know everybody loving what, what they, they do. do you know what i mean and and, and i mean i um i can totally talking to people that have been actually on a couple of the sets that i've seen you on mm-hmm. early um uh one friend of mine right now i'm, I'm thinking about her mm-hmm. she was talking about the business and talking about how you have to love it in yeah. order to do to put up with the hours the long yeah. hours and yeah. uh, she was talking about there's a school uh, I can't remember the name of the school but she the school actually trains you for long hours mm. like a normal college would be you go to school from class from 12 to whatever or 8 o'clock class and they but they have classes she said she would say like 12 in the morning oh, to wow. 2 to just to train <laughs> you just to train you on uh-huh. you're going to be up all night doing this kind of thing yeah, yeah. So you have to love it to be to have that kind of dedication. You are. Well, to be. My most recent movie, we uh we had one night where they had a technical difficulty with some screens that they were using, and uh, they had to get it right, so that stretched some time. But we ended up being that day. I think we came in like seven in the morning, 
And that was actors. You know, the crew comes Super like early. two hours before the right. actors do. Mad at y'all. Right. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> and we were out there, you know, the crew leaves, the crew comes first and they leave after. You right, know what I mean? right, right, right. And so, you know, we were up there and I think we got there like seven in the morning and we got all the way through to the next day. It was like four in the morning what? still filming. Yeah, when we left, when we finally wrapped and left set, the sun was coming out. Your check was beefy. They were taking us back to the hotel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they got, yeah, they got to pay you. I think we were like double overtime yeah. and a half. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, but yeah, so you're going to see some days like that. I, I worked on Ottawa, too. We had a day like that. Okay. Where we went to, you know, people just passing out, slobbering, snoring, yeah. getting caught on camera. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> One of those from six in the morning to seven the next day. Yeah. You know, so it, it happens and you got to love it. And I do. You know, when I was out there, it was four in the morning. We were sitting in the BMW, you know, filming people around us, people getting cranky, you know what I mean? As, you know, as you know, it's going to happen. And, uh, but, you know, even when I, I'm tired, I still, I love it so much that it's like, when I'm on a film set, it's like, there's no place I'd rather be. be. You know what I mean? So it doesn't bother me. Right. Like, what? You know, we're it's so not sorry, like work. but we got to do that scene again because this is that. And I tell them, like, are you kidding? This is what I'm here for. Like, I'm good. Right. Like, I enjoy when we stop. That's when I have a problem. Right. <laughs> you right, know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah. That's because now I'm looking to get back. You know, either can't wait to the next day, or if the project's over, now I'm looking for my next next project. project. Right. Because that's what I love to do. You know, I don't feel like which I'm means right. you're doing the right thing. Right. And that's how that's how I know it. You know, that's when I first realized. How, when I got to a film set, I think I was doing um, I was doing Dead Heist. I already knew I loved it, but I wasn't sure how much. And I was doing a small film, Dead Heist with Swirl Films, and um, we were on set. And I mean, I I made like the bare minimum. I worked like a month. And fortunately, I was doing other things that you know I didn't have to worry about my bills because otherwise, I, right. <laughs> you know, right. I was struggling. Month, right, right. <laughs> I was struggling after that month. Um, but you know, I wasn't making that much. But I mean, I had the time of my life. And when people ask me. Now, I've done, you know, some other bigger, way bigger projects now, but when people ask me, you know, what was one of your favorite movies, right? Um, I always go back de to Dead Heist, you know, and just because, you know, it was my first time in a lead role, um, yeah. and I was just, you know, it was a real production, you know, and the whole nine, and that was my first time experiencing it, I was in heaven, you know, I was in heaven, cloud nine, I you know, yeah. Man. And I knew, I know, I was like, no, I really love this, like, to the core. Right. You know what I mean? And that's one of the biggest things, biggest pieces of advice I give to people. Because people come to me all the time, man, how do I get on? How do I get started? And I don't mean to prejudge people, but I can have a conversation with them. And I don't say it to them, because I never discourage anybody, you know. But in my mind, I'm kind of like, you know, this ain't. This ain't for you. You, you know what I mean? You don't want it. There's no getting on. You know what I mean? There's, you go. And, get yourself on. Right. You get yourself on and. Just think of it like a, a degree or a job promotion or something that you got to work hard to get. Well, in this business, you got to work 10 times as hard as you would in a regular job to get a promotion or to get, you know, a degree or whatever. You got to work 10 times as hard to get the most minimal thing. You know what I mean? And then on top of all that, you got to have some luck on your side too. Right. <laughs> so Some stuff that just happens. It's a, it's a restaurant it's roulette. Less, right. right. You can work your behind off. You can work in the gym every day, three hours a day, have a God body, have to be the most talented actor and all that stuff. And if you don't have the luck, none of that will mean anything for you. You can work 20 years in the business. If you don't have some luck and you don't get those big breaks that you need, right. then all that can be for nothing. And that's the scary thing about film. Right. Because even I've been there, you know? So you really have to be, I mean, that says that you really have to be all in, whatever happens. Yeah. No plan. As my man life. You can mess around and waste your life. Right, right, right. You can mess my around. Man, my man life says that he's a speaker. He, I don't know, you might know him. Uh, he says that he's a poet. He always says, There's, I, you know, there is no plan B for me right now. Right. This is what I'm doing. And I think, actually think I saw a post mm -hmm. you put up about something like that. Like, this is your, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, I told that to somebody the other day, this girl out in uh, Louisiana. Uh, that I did a little, uh, I did a video for her while I was in Atlanta, and um, she, you know, she was asking me about advice, you know, and she was talk, she was telling me how she's, she's decided that she's a great singer, and that's what she, her heart is to be right. a successful singer, in the music business, and uh, she was telling me, you know, she was excited, she was like, all right, decided what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to college, and I'm gonna work on my music, you know, at the same time, and she was like, what do you think of that? 
I'm not the person to tell anybody don't go to college. You right. know what I mean? Um, but there's a reality to certain things. The same effort that you put in, because you're a graduate, you know, right. you know what it takes, the long nights, the studying, the struggling, trying to you know, work a little job, make a little bit of scrap money, right. and go to school at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And all, you know, it's a struggle, yeah. you know. And, you know, I was telling her, you know, that same thing you have to put in to get your degree, you got to dedicate all your focus and time, triple focus, on attaining, you know, that position in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I was telling her, like, to be, you want my honest, I'm always for real with people, like, you want my honest opinion? You need to do. You need to need to go to college, or you need to focus on your music. If you're serious about it, I think she's 24. I was like, you're 24 years old. Now, in my line of work, you can be whatever age. You know what I'm saying? But in your line of work, it's a young man, young woman game. You know, even if you're not, because that's the other thing people don't know is a lot of their favorite artists aren't the ages they think they are. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> I learned that too. Yeah. I learned the, that. I learned the key, it. The key to entertainment. People like 26, and I was. I, mean, I was like 22. Like you're 26 <laughs> playing a 15 year old. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you know, the, the thing about this business is you have uh, the key is to stay looking younger as you get older, more mature, wiser, more talented. You know, you've cultivated your craft more. You've got way more experience. And then people see you blow up, and they think, oh, you just came out of nowhere. nowhere. You're just a young kid. You know, that young kid's like 28. Right. right. <laughs> you know? Been in the business for right. right. They're like, probably, you probably I'm saw them on a commercial right. and didn't realize it. Exactly. Right. That's how it happens. You know, I was telling her, like, you need to go, you know, do you really, really believe in yourself? Do you really believe you can be? So oh, I believe 100%. I know I can become a star in music business. Right, right. I was like, well, then you need to put college off. Because you ain't getting no younger. By the time you graduate, you'll be 28. Trying to pursue music, you're done. Mm -hmm. If you don't get on now, right. you're done. You know what I mean? Right. Wow, that's that's a, that's a hard yeah. lesson, but it's the real. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm telling her, I'm like, somebody's around. Because the entertainment business, we mix and mingle with everybody. You know what I mean? We got athletes that mess with us. We got rappers, music artists. You know, everybody is all connected. You know what I mean? So right. I know these people. I know successful singers and rappers and whatever else. And um, you really have to say, this is what I'm going to do. Back to the no plan B. Right. You know, that's what I was telling her. She was like, but that's my plan B if music doesn't work. So I said, see, that's your first problem. It can't be a, if this don't work out. If you're really going to do this, then that's what you're doing. Either right. you fail at it, and that's your life legacy, or you succeed at it, and that's your life legacy. But either way, if that's really what you want to do, you got to scrap all that other stuff. And be all in. You know, right. You know, college is college is a great um, asset to your life. Right. You know what I mean? A degree will help you. But a degree doesn't determine your destiny. You do. And so some people, I went to college. You know, I went back later on. I went to Cape Fear here. You know what yep, I mean? Yeah. And um, after Cape Fear, I was like, it, I, it was a struggle because what I wanted to do, they didn't offer anything toward what I actually wanted to do. So right. I was there studying, learning, going through the motions, and not doing anything. I was like, I'm not using none of this. You know what I mean? And for the most part, I haven't used anything that I, that <laughs> I learned. learned that, not right. that they taught bad. It was just... Not it what, you, what right. you were. I learned that, you know, because I was going to go to UCW from there, and it was like, that's not what I want to do. You know, I really got to go after and focus 100% on what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And it just happened to be... And you can go to school for film and stuff like that, etc. But that's just not where I was at a place in my life where I wanted to either A, pay for it, <laughs> and B, you know, go and put in that time and then come and try to get back started. I was in Wilmington, North Carolina. The, you know, film business was popping around here. And right. It was a great place to start from and, you know, work my way into versus in L.A., where it's a lot harder to work into those circles. Right. Wilmington, you could do that, you know, when the film incentive was strong, you had so many projects right. coming, so many people coming, and networking heavy, you know what I mean? And um, so that's what I did from there was start networking, getting, you know, projects, you know, doing things. I did even Dawson's Creek. Yeah. You know, I was an ex Yeah, that, a lot of people don't remember that. The Dawson's <laughs> yeah. Creek was here. Like, Dawson's that, was, Creek, that right. was the first yeah. uh, One Tree Hill, right, per se. Exactly. Right. Cause that paved the way for One Tree Hill, right? And uh, you know, I was doing, I was an extra on that, and I got Katie like, Holmes. First, that was her first, first launch, right? Line. Yeah, yeah. First real speaking line on um, One Tree Hill. Just being there, they needed, they had a scene with a bouncer, and they were like, 
it didn't make sense with just one bouncer. So it just pulled me from the crowd. You know, but it's where my networking came in handy because the guy, it was funny, the guy, uh, his name was Tony. Never forget a real cool dude. He used to work at Pan Cannon Associates. And uh, he was the guy that would call you and tell you, hey, we got our extra role for you. And, um, but he was also trying to act. And so they threw him that, you know, small role in that episode. Mm -hmm. And he was the one when they said, we need another bouncer in this, you know. And we're in the middle of filming. It ain't no, hey, go make calls, pull files, right. call people in tomorrow. It's got to be like now, on. right. Right. It needs money right now <laughs> on the spot. And he was the one that was like, we got a big guy for you. He's here right now. You know, and they came and got Boom. me. Boom, yeah. that's awesome. They came and got me, and the director was like, can you say this line? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said the line for I him. I said twice, right. Yeah, I said the line for him. He was like, oh, great, perfect. Put him up, you know, put him up there. And then my whole, the whole world changed Shit, because right. now I come from extras holding, right. which is usually in a shack somewhere, right, right, somewhere right. uncomfortable. Right, hot. And, you know, with 40 other people, right, and right. jacked up snacks and water. To, so, to now you have like it's, yeah, it's like salmon, February. right? <laughs> right, it's like February, so we we're in a place with no heat, out in Riceville Beach. Oh wow! And yeah, so it's like we're in cups. It's like thirty degrees in this building, and uh, so then they, you know, they're like, "Oh, you can go." And I was lost because I didn't know everything yet. You know, stand in, so mm -hmm. I didn't know it. I thought I lost the job as soon as I got it. Right, right, like, right. Stand in, I'm right. like, "What's right. he doing?" Like, <laughs> hey, you can go out with the actors, and I'm like. I had to ask Tony. I was like, did he just fire me? Right, right. What happened? He was like, no, this is stand-ins, you know, and first team and second team. I didn't know what none of that stuff was. Right, right. And um, but so then I got to go with the actors, and I would go up in a warm area, and I'm sitting with um, Dawson and some of the others, and they're like, hey, man, what's up? And I'm yeah, like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my first real experience being around a cast. And right, stuff like right. That. And, um, and you that know, is so good cool, warm man. snacks and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just, you know, being prepared and being ready and networking and some luck. You know what I mean? And, you know, then from there, just doing bit parts here and there. Working. Once I realized, oh, you can get checks from this stuff. Right. Like, you can really even get paid. <laughs> you can get paid. And see, you know, this is the thing. I mean, I'm not even going to try to lie and sit up here and say, I mean, it's hard work. You heard the man. It's hard work. But I'm not even going to try to lie and say, that actors don't get paid. Yeah, no, we get, we get they paid. get paid. <laughs> like, dude, even the extras. I mean, you know, it's not a lot of money, like a hundred, you know, maybe a hundred some dollars, two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. something like that. But when you step up and you have a word mm -hmm. on, because somebody told me, uh, you get a SAG card. It's as soon as you say something, somebody told me, yeah. as soon as you say a word, well, you get SAG like, eligible. You don't get the SAG card. eligible. Okay, yeah. and so then you got to you got to pay the membership. Right, right, then right. Then you you know, then you go SAG. So, uh, Screen Actors Guild, for those that don't know, but, yeah. um, well, you know. It's SAG after now. Oh, is join. that what it's called? Yeah, they joined. See, I'm not in the business. Uh, yeah, I'm not in the business. It used to be so, SAG or after. After handled TV, SAG handled movies, and then they've combined now. And so, so, it's SAG, SAG after. after. Yeah. So, um, talk about, you know, because we, we haven't even talked about your two <laughs> films yet. Or, well, you, more than, well, how many films have you done? You've done probably, you said you uh, a lot. Yeah. Probably too many to count. Yeah, it was like 20, 20 something films and TV. Wow. Yeah. So, um, one that uh, probably gets you the most, mm -hmm. people ask you the most about, what would that be? Uh, right now, that'd be Love for Sale. Love for Sale. Love for Sale. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we, we got a record with BET for most spins. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like That's the movie. It's, it's a funny little entertaining movie, but we had no idea that it was going to go like it did. And blow up like you know that. I mean, and. Um, it's crazy because I remember, it's funny, man. I remember and it's a good, it's numbers. funny and it's a good film. It's yeah, a good film. Like yeah, I remember seeing the numbers in that same weekend. Love for Sale debuted. Now, it's, of course, box office and TV is different, but the number one movie in box office, you know, the numbers that they had, we actually had more numbers than all those movies on our debut. Wow. You know what I mean? Which, like I said, it's still different because people have to go and pay. To get in to see that movie, so that you know has a that's lot a more big, weight. That's a big deal, though. But still, you know, it was like crazy because it was like, no, we really were the number one movie. <laughs> and then BT apparently they picked up on it. You know how many people responded to it, and they just ran. I mean, I remember days watching it because you know it's it's that weird movie where you can see Love for Sale a million times, and this happened to me. And I've had people hit me on Twitter or Facebook or people I know that have the same experience. It's that movie that. You've seen it 20 times, but when it comes on, it's like, you gotta oh, watch God, it. they're playing Love for Sale again. But you don't turn. But you go watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. You don't turn. Yeah. You end up watching you it watch anyway. It. Right. You know, so they played it. And I'll tell, tell you why. I mean, I know we're not here just to talk about the movie, but I'll tell you why for me, that's the case. For me, it's because you can see yourself 
mm-hmm. or a part of your life yeah. in one instance, in some part of the movie. Yeah. You know, relationship-wise or right. something. You can see, <laughs> you know, somebody you know yeah. or somebody you... So it's really like watching life, real life. Right. And it's like, yeah, I, you know, I've been in a situation... You know, where I've seen a guy do that before. I've seen a girl that yeah. was going through that, that type of thing. Yeah, and we were having fun. We had a, uh, even in the, the, the uh, more sad or more intense parts, off camera, we were still having a lot of fun mm-hmm. and talking right before the scenes. Except me and Jackie didn't get along. That's the funny thing that people don't realize is we didn't, which later on, you know, figured out that, you know, producers and directors had kind of, we're saying things on the side orchestrated it to make us, you know, have a little beef or whatever, so it come across real oh. on camera. And they see they do stuff like they that. They do stuff like that. Yeah, they do stuff like that. So, I mean, well, I mean, we get along now. We actually right. work together. The movie I wrote, Mister Wright, he was one of the stars of. Right. And so, so you're writing. I, I want to talk about that, yeah, man. Yeah. This is only a thirty minute show. We already reached thirty <laughs> minutes. I haven't even gotten to. But no, I mean, I'm interested. Like we haven't even got to. So so talk about oh, talk about your because uh, right now like you're the film that right now that you just wrapped you said a month ago can you talk about you can talk about it right yeah, yeah, yeah. so talk about that film I'm, I'm gonna let you mm-hmm. let the cat out the bag officially on Shaper Speaks okay. <laughs> well the movie's called All Eyes on Me it's the uh, biopic about Tupac Shakur mm-hmm. um, and his his life not just his rap career uh, but just his life of you know the people around him that made him who he is from a child on up. You know, that really developed who Tupac was and gives you a really good idea of who Tupac probably would have became, you know, in his, his, his uh, I like to call it cocooning, cocooning stage. Wow. Because um, he, he died in the middle of that, you know, this, yeah. this evolution that we all see start. You know, we didn't get to see it really through Progress. fruition. Yeah. But we got to see it start, you know, in the direction he was going. And um, and it was more you get to see it's more more of his roots were starting to come up at that era. Yeah. And that's why you were starting to see him kind of shift, because you know when you see what he came out of, you know his people, his mother, uh, his aunt, his stepfather, and other people, um, you realize why some of his lyrics were the way they were, you right? Know, or why he was so um, so so for Black Pride. And, yeah. Uh, those things like that. When you see what he went through, you understand. Right. You know, his exactly. family, you know what I mean? Who they were. Who they were and the things they dealt with and stuff that had nothing to do with music. Um, just about fighting for justice, you know, and, and the price you pay for that. Right. You know what I mean? And um, and then, you know, him to come, you know, come about the way he came about and to become a rapper and uh, even way more so. It was so much like a like an onion. You know, we saw a few layers Right. Was, he was getting to the point of like, you know, all right, let me shed those layers. Let me show you the real pop inside, you know, the who, this, real who stuff. I am. Right. right. The real stuff. He couldn't. And I, I don't want to say like Pac was pretending uh, to be something he wasn't. But Pac was, uh, you got to remember, Pac was like 25 when he died. He was a young dude. You right. imagine the difference of you and 20, 20, 20. And the you now. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pac totally was, different person. Right. So he wasn't.